is Petitions Guide. Introduction and Practice for Spot and Aesthetic Clinics. Audiobook edited by Preliminary Publishing. Forward. This electronic book has been published for all those people who see in the art of body aesthetics a way to use their time profitably. And as the feminine figure and its self-esteem are the factors most related to mental health, personal fulfillment, and happiness, it has several chapters that illustrate, defining and explaining many of the concepts and procedures that are necessary to work with in an aesthetic clinic, or even manage it as a business of its own. The bibliography available on the internet on beauty techniques and protocols most accepted at present has been updated with this manual that left nothing pending because all the topics and subtopics that will complete any questions you have and are related to this have been included. Field so recommended in our days. Beginning with Chapter 1 where we approach the origin and theory of aesthetics from ancient Greece and compare it with contemporary Greek thinking. In the second entitled Spa and Aesthetic Clinics, we define their concept, their types and highlight the healthy benefits that can be obtained from various types of therapies that combine the natural and millinery techniques. And we will see how aesthetics also helps people in more serious cases where the facial trauma suffered by some accidents that disfigure our face with more invasive scientific methods. Facial Therapies is the title of the third chapter that describes the protocol with the detailed steps of the massage for the discomfort of the face and shows us the type of skin. We also find here a brief introduction to cosmetology. Next, we deal extensively with nine of the most used body treatments in clinics by beauticians who will also warn us when they are applicable to patients and to those who are contraindicated. In some of these chapters you will also find examples of medical documents for the patient's file of the aesthetic clinic as they should be filled out and archived for an excellent service. Specialized hair removal is another chapter of this topic that we develop from the characteristics of the hair, selection criteria of hair removal technique, classes of techniques and of course their protocol when proceeding to apply them. Another of the topics that we have not left out of this book is the anatomy covering four of the systems and body appliances more directly associated with the treatment and aesthetic therapies that are available to the beauty offices. Chapter 7 is about nutrition that in its nine subtitles reproduces volume 1 of the meticulous diet plan 12 diets of fullness, the pyramid of nutrition where, among other options, one can determine the body mass index. Finally the eighth chapter we will know how the terminology of protocol and label their historical origin and evolution to our day in which postmodernism introduces rules or subconscious rules in the members of society on how we should be to use the phone, among others many tips on dress, styles for both ladies and gentlemen. The customs of cultural etiquette are also another interesting topic that we have wanted to present exhaustively in this section. The last chapter is for aesthetic professionals and culminates with the details and knowledge that every beautician should know. It has been a pleasure for me to share with you, my readers, the most important data on aesthetics and beauty that I have been able to compile for this manual or guide, although it is not extensive, we hope that you will not be forgotten and you can take advantage of this knowledge for your profession, your family and personal well-being. The Author Chapter 1 
The aesthetic traces several levels of measurement of the attributes of human beauty that range from the simplicity of the beautiful, the candor of the beautiful and in the highest concept the naturalness of the beautiful. Others maintain that the inner beauty of a person can be valued by the positive qualities that a person practices before other people that without overrating the physical as we regularly emphasize, make human values as the primary standard of social estimation and public recognition. We recognize that the physical appearance, dress and manners of our behavior are signs of education or academic preparation, as well as social status, but physical attractiveness also arises if there is a difference between the beautiful and the sublime. On the one hand we find the inherent factors in the personality and experience of each person as the vanity which is defined as a quality of conceit and presumption for what is shown or demonstrated. Parallel the sense of personal taste is differentiated in each individual or group of influence among the evolution of social fashions. We can point out that submitting to the jury after preparing and instructing ourselves in the areas of communication, audiovisual media, modeling, advertising and other similar fields, it requires a prior process of adaptation to criticism by not falling into grace and dreaming of a goal for the sake of taste. Another aspect of aesthetics that should not disturb or inhibit us at all times is the sense of belonging to a race, a term used to classify humanity according to physical and genetic characteristics. Historically, physical anthropologists had divided humanity, according to its morphological features, into three great subdivisions or races, Negroid, Mongoloid and Caucasian. Some scientists went further by adding the Amerindian and the Oceanic. As a biological concept, the breed was more evident when the differences made reference to the morphological features, such as skin pigmentation, color, shape and thickness of the hair, the shape of the nose or body structure. The appearance of genetic analysis came to refute this idea. Before this definition, the classification of races depended on a combination of geographical, ecological and morphological factors. However, the term race is controversial because of the notions of superiority and inferiority implicit in it. The concept of race is not particularly useful from the biological or sociological point of view, since all races belong to a single biological species, Homo sapiens, and only show small genetic variations. Culture is a much more important factor in determining the behavior and lifestyle of different human groups. The race constituted the justification for establishing the state of slavery, the persecution of minorities and other social groups, such as that of the Jewish people during Nazi Germany, or the apartheid system in South Africa. Medicine, and the psychology of art, although independent disciplines, are related to aesthetics. The psychology of art is related to elements of this discipline such as human responses to color, sound, line, form and words, and the ways in which emotions condition such responses. In medicine, surgeries are the treatment of a disease or correction of a deformity or defect, by manual or operative procedures with or without the use of medications. This branch of medicine is subdivided according to the nature of the procedure used in general surgery, which treats all types of injuries, orthopedic surgery of the locomotor system that is responsible for correcting deformities, plastic surgery, 
which tries to reconstruct the tissues and repair the loss of them, especially by means of tissue transfer. Surgery is also subdivided according to the region concerned. Neurosurgery central nervous system and spinal cord and surgery ear, nose, throat cardiac surgery heart vascular surgery arterial, venous and lymphatic systems thoracic surgery chest and lungs digestive surgery abdominal and pelvic organs urological surgery kidneys, excretory apparatus and genitals and gynecological surgery female reproductive system origin and theory like many of the philosophical branches aesthetics originated in Greece along with philosophy in this evolution among the legends of the various Greek gods are embodied the ugliness values and male and female beauty. We find some of the most revealing myths of human feelings. For the personification of the feminine beauty it is indicated to Aphrodite, goddess of the love and the beauty, equivalent to the Roman Venus. In the Iliad of Homer appears as the daughter of Zeus and Dione one of his consorts, but in later legends it is described sprouting from the foam of the sea and its name can be translated as born of foam. In the Homeric legend, Aphrodite is the wife of Hephaestus, the ugly and lame god of fire. Among her lovers is Ares, god of war, who in later mythology appears as her husband. She was the rival of Persephone, queen of the underworld, with whom she fought for the love of the beautiful young Greek Adonis. While the beautiful young Adonis, loved by the goddesses Aphrodite and Persephone is the male personification, born of the incestuous union of King Cinerus of Cyprus and his daughter, Adonis was placed under the custody of Persephone. Queen of the Underworld When Adonis died when attacked by a wild boar that he hunted, Aphrodite implored the god Zeus to return it to him. Zeus decreed that Adonis would spend the winter months with Persephone in Hades and the summer months with Aphrodite. The story of his death and resurrection is a symbol of the natural cycle of death and rebirth. The pagan incarnation of ugliness is Pan, which in Greek mythology is the god of forests, fields and fertility, son of Hermes, messenger of the gods, and of a nymph. In part animal, with the horns, legs and ears of a goat, was a robust deity, god of shepherds and goat herds. Magnificent musician. With his flute of reed or pipe accompanied the nymphs of the forest while they danced. His favorite places were mountains, caves and rugged landscapes, but his favorite was Arcadia, where he was born. He invented this flute when he was pursuing the nymph firing it and locked her in a bed of reed so that she could not escape from it. Pan, then took canes of unequal length and played with them. The god always praised the nymphs playing the instrument, but all rejected it because of its ugliness. It is assumed that the word panic derives from the fear felt by travelers when they heard the sound of their flute in the solitude of the night. Regarding the first aesthetic theory of some scope was that formulated by Plato, who considered that reality is composed of forms that are beyond the limits of human sensation and that are the models of all things that exist for human experience. The objects that human beings can experience are examples or imitations of those forms. The work of the philosopher, therefore, 
consists in understanding from the experienced or perceived object, the reality that he imitates, while the artist copies the experienced object, or uses it as a model for his work. Thus, the artist's work is an imitation of what is in itself an imitation. In his dialogue the banquet indicated the difference between contemplating the appearance of beauty and reaching the very idea of the beauty. Platonic thought had a marked ascetic tendency. In another of his most famous dialogues, the Republic went even further by repudiating some types of artists from his ideal society because he thought that with his works they stimulated the morality or represented despicable characters, and that certain musical compositions caused laziness and incited individuals to perform actions that were not subject to any notion of measurement. One could imitate the things as they should be, he wrote, adding that are compliments to a certain extent what nature can't not bring to an end. Aristotle also spoke of art as imitation, but not in the Platonic sense. The artist separates the form of matter from some objects of experience, such as the human body or a tree, and imposes the form on other matter such as a canvas or marble. Thus, imitation does not consist only in copying an original model, but in conceiving a symbol of the original. Rather, it is about the concrete representation of an aspect of a thing, and each work is an imitation of a universal whole. The manner of administration was considered an art when quoting Aristotle and Plato, aesthetics was inseparable from morality and politics. The first, when dealing with music in his politics, maintained that art affects the human character and, therefore, the social order. Since Aristotle held that happiness is the destiny of life, he believed that the main function of art is to provide satisfaction to men. In his great work on the principles of artistic creation, O Ethics, Reason, in his great work on the principles of artistic creation, Poetic, he reasoned that tragedy stimulates the emotions of compassion and fear, which he considered pessimistic and insane, to the point that at the end of the performance the spectator purges himself of all this. This catharsis makes the audience healthier on the psychological level and, thus, more able to achieve happiness. Since the 17th century, the neoclassical drama was heavily influenced by the Aristotelian poetics. The works of the French playwrights Jean-Baptiste Racine, Pierre Corneille and Molière, in particular, embraced the guiding principles of the doctrine of the three units, time, place and action. This concept dominated literary theories until the 19th century. Finally, the modern situation would be that of the provocation of the compliment or flattery that is offered when seeing someone of the opposite sex. How to say the aesthetic experience is very close to the mystical experience, because it generates an earthly abandon while contemplating the aesthetic object. During the Middle Ages, art was at the service of religious expression and its aesthetic principles were based, in a primordial way, on Neoplatonism. Throughout the Renaissance, in the 15th and 16th centuries, art experienced a process of secularization and classical aesthetics encompassed more fields than the merely religious. Although linked to Neoplatonism, the 3rd century philosopher Plotinus gave greater importance to art than Plato himself. In his thesis he stated that art revealed the shape of an object with greater clarity than normal experience and leads the soul to the contemplation of the universal. 
according to Plotinus, the highest moments of life are mystical states, with which he implied that the soul is united, in the world of forms, to the divine, which he conceptualized as the one. Contemporary Aesthetics Modernity brought us the contributions of four philosophers of the late 19th and early 20th century with their respective thoughts of the main contemporary aesthetic influences. In France, Henri Bergson defined science as the use of intelligence to create a symbol system that describes reality even if it falsifies it in the real world. Art, however, is based on intuitions, which is a direct apprehension of reality not interfered with by thought. Thus, art finds its way to conventional symbols and beliefs about man, life and society and confronts the individual with reality itself. The philosopher and historian Benedetto Fauci also exalted intuition, because he considered it to be the immediate awareness of an object that in some way represents a form of an object, that is, the apprehension of things instead of what one reflects from things. Works of art are the expression, in material form, of such intuitions, beauty and ugliness, however, are not traits of works of art but qualities of the spirit expressed intuitively in that same work of art. The philosopher in Spanish origin Jorge Ruiz he said a lot of reason that when one gets pleasure in a thing, pleasure can be considered for the quality of the thing itself, rather than for the subjective part of it. You can't not characterize any human act as good in itself, or call it good for the service of a thing, so to it, nor can it be said that some object is beautiful, because it's called a saint we need to call it beautiful. You can be affected, the sense of beauty is in the right step, to propose novel arguments to a wrong consideration of the aesthetic phenomenon. The American pedagogue philosopher John Dewey considered the human experience and disconnected, fragmentary, full of principles without conclusion, or as experiences manipulated with clarity as mean, destined to achieve concrete ends. Those exceptional experiences, which flow from their origin to their confirmation, are aesthetic. The aesthetic experience is pleasure for its own interest. It is complete and independent and it is final. It is not limited to being instrumental or fulfilling a specific purpose, 